All right, so here we are doing a <clears throat> typical bleach spot. You can see I have some options. I can go all the way across. So I have two lines. I can go this way and do four lines, or I can um, <clears throat> do this way and have three lines, or three seams, I should say. <clears throat> so the problem with going all the way across is I want to use just this edge of the carpet. So I don't want to go that way. So I think I'll do it with just this piece. Now she does have a spare piece of carpet. You can see that it's the backing is pretty soft and worn out. So I really think this is kind of a fussy piece. I don't want to put it in this area. I would rather use the closet carpet to put over here. So I'm going to take this up to here and do three lines because this is getting fairly close. So I might as well do three lines. And we have here in the heart of the wear is going to be where it doesn't quite match as perfectly. <clears throat> so we do have some worries and it's important to tell the customer, you know, when you're doing unworn to worn, you're going to notice a difference of texture, of fluff and brightness. So it does stick out a little bit. So uh, let me get started and take care of this. Okay, so I cut this piece out. I cut the closet piece out. I cut our mat carpet to match our closet piece that came out. And now we're going to, so what I did to cut this is, is I lay them on their backs and make a pattern. Now generally, if you have a really large piece, you don't make a pattern. If you have a smaller piece uh, and you trim in place, like if I'm doing a three foot piece or something like that, on a smaller one that's gonna maintain its shape, I can do a pattern. And we have to be perfect on it to make sure that it's exactly right. And what you do is you line up your ruler on the piece that's cutting. So let's say it's like this and you get it completely flush with the line. And then I always put my knee on the angle to hold it, remove that, put one hand here, and then the other hand with the knife and do my cut. So that's how you do the cuts. Now let's take a look and see how well it fits. So we're also keeping the orientation proper because these fairly rectangular you can reverse them but there might be a little bit off now we can see how it'll join we want to make sure everything is pushed to its furthest point and Make sure it's all good, but there really isn't any going back at this point other than taking a whole new piece. So there isn't a lot of things I can do. I can lift the carpet a little bit there and pull it, or push a knee kicker on this side to get it a little bit more room um, if I need to, just to get it a little tighter if, if I cut it with any gap, but it looks perfect. The other thing we want to do is check our margins and you can see when we cut we can see that there's some areas like right in here you can see a little bit of a uh, of backing and we like to have the fiber right up to the edge because it hides the seam better so if there's a little trimming you can do it helps but keep in mind you're also removing your pattern um, and since these are a little bit twisty they don't uh, trim all that perfectly once they've been stretched into a house. All right, so now after we've ran our seaming iron, we give it a full minute to cure with, or cool rather, with the weight slash vacuum. It's a little noisy, so I turned it off for a second, but this is what it sounds like. Let's finish that up and then I'll do this stretch it. 
Okay, so we have our seaming iron now, and we'll just work our way this direction. This is our one seam. Let's go this direction now. Okay, so this is our first seam. This is our second seam. We still a little warm, so I think I'll run the fan a little, little longer because I'm going to be pulling this a little bit to get it a little tighter. So let's make sure those seams are cool so I don't pull them off of their line. So let's put this back and run it for a little longer. When doing a seam, there's what's called a pinch. You pull this in kind of a pinching motion as you slide your iron down. So just your finger pressure and then um, you get it nice and stuck down as you go a little bit at a time. So we're just going to go a couple inches at a time, pull it while I'm pinching. The last bit is always hard, so I kind of drag the tail as I bring it up. Okay, so this is the repair, and this was the old piece. And if we look close at our seam, we can just see how good it is. We don't see any gaps at all. Nice and strong. One of the, and then of course our closet piece. And this is why I didn't want to use this to patch that. It was kind of worn out, sun faded. Um, good enough for a closet, but just not good enough for right there in the, in the walkway. Then also the backing was broken down. So we could have also patched our other piece, but you can see Generally, I don't like to do that because I like the this part is curved and so I like to cut that curve off on both edges. So usually you cut a bigger piece than you need so you can get a sharper edge um, when you go to do your repair. And um, so usually what I'll do, you know, when we have a bleach spot, um, I'll use carpet from my uh, truck. Um, in this case, they had the exact same carpet in a mat, um, um, so it's fine for closet. But uh, and it's, I thought it actually would be a closer match, but uh, I'm sure glad I didn't use it over there, which is what she wanted to do. Um, I, I charged an extra twenty-five to do the swap, and um, she wasn't sure if she wanted to pay that extra twenty-five. But I think after she sees how much better it is that we did that, she'll be happy that she added the twenty-five to the job to do a closet swap versus just a patch with her own, her own carpet, which wasn't good enough. <laughs> All right, this has been John with Hillbrand's Carpet Care. I hope this helps you as far as instructional, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.